Hi everybody, happy Tuesday. Today we're going to be learning about a new explorer who is actually a French guy and his name was Samuel de Champlain. And you learned about him briefly in our social studies unit, but we're going to learn some more about him today. And before we get started, I would like for you to be well, I'd like for you to look at the glossary in your reader, which I have right here, because we're going to learn about two new words, two terms that you need to know. So the first is the word pelt. And a pelt is the fur or the skin of an animal. And in the time of Champlain, people did not have a lot of options for what they could use to make clothing and to stay warm. So in Europe, people were making their clothes from wool or animal pelts. And some really rich people had clothes made from silk. Okay, so which of these do you think would be warmest? And which one do you think would be the hardest to find? And the second word that I want you to know is the word trade. Okay, here's trade. And trade is, the definition here is to exchange something you have for something someone else has. To exchange goods. So this type of trade is similar to trading that you might do all the time when you're trading baseball cards or trading lunches. And in this chapter, you're going to learn that the word trade can also be a noun that means a business. So before people used dollars and cents to buy things in stores, they went to trading posts and they traded something that they had a lot of for something that they needed. So what we're going to be learning about today, like I said, is Samuel de Champlain. And there's two things I want you to be listening for while I do this read aloud in your reader. The first thing is, how did Samuel de Champlain change the way Europeans thought about North America? Okay, how did he change the way Europeans thought about North America? And the second one is, which explorers had the greatest success in America and why? So, out of all the explorers that we've learned about, who do you think was the most successful? Who had the best um, exploration and got the most from it? Okay, so be thinking about those questions. And at the end of this reading today, you're going to be answering some questions in a Nearpod. Okay, so let's get started. The French explorer Samuel de Champlain made his first voyages to North America around the time Henry Hudson was trying to find the Northwest Passage. Champlain earned a reputation for being a talented navigator by le leading a two-year expedition to the West Indies and Central America. The son of a sea captain, he was not born into high social status in France, but his accomplishments as a navigator and talented mapmaker earned him an honorary title of Royal Geographer from King Henry the Sixth, or sorry, the Fourth in his court. In 1603, Champlain was invited to sail on a French fur trading expedition to an area known at the time as New France in present-day Canada. Decades before Champlain's expeditions in 1534, a French navigator and explorer, Jacques Cartier, claimed the shores of the St. Lawrence River, the Gulf of St. Lawrence, in the areas now known as Newfoundland and Nova Scotia in honor of France. Cartier's attempts to colonize an area around present-day Quebec failed at that time. But these explorations were only the beginning of a fur trading relationship between France and the natives in the area of New France. Now, again, this is kind of a bad map, but this is North America right here. And up here is the east coast of what is now the U.S. So, like, right here is Massachusetts, where I'm from. And up here is Maine and Vermont. And these orange areas are what used to be New France. So some of what is now North America, like near Louisiana and the Mississippi, belongs to France, but also up in, in um, Canada, all these areas belong to France. So like this is where Quebec is now and where Montreal is, and this is around Michigan here. So all of this belonged to France. The goal of Champlain's 1603 expedition was to trade with the native people in the area of New France and return home with beaver pelts and other furs that could be sold in France. During this voyage, Champlain talked to fur traders and fishermen and met native people of the areas he visited. He made a map of the St. Lawrence River, a long river that flows away from the Great Lakes and empties into the Atlantic Ocean. 
When he returned home to France, Champlain published a report on his expedition. By 1604, Champlain took part in an attempt to start a French colony in New France with a small group of colonists. They suffered a difficult winter in their original settlement near the mouth of the St. Croix River, during which almost half of the colonists died. After Champlain and a few men scouted the surrounding area, their surviving colonists moved to the area presently known as Nova Scotia. This colonization attempt was not a success, but Champlain took this time to explore and map areas along the Atlantic coast, eventually sailing as far south as Cape Cod. After exploring several possible locations along the northeastern Atlantic coast, Champlain decided that the best place for a French colony was along the St. Lawrence River. Champlain envisioned this colony becoming a control center for the fur trade. This was a sign of an important change in the way Europeans thought about North America. John Cabot and Henry Hudson had been trying to find a way to go around America, or a way to go through it. They were not especially interested in America and its resources. They were interested in goods from Asia and the East Indies, such as spices and silk. They thought of America as something that was blocking their way. With Champlain, there was a new way of thinking. Champlain was still interested in finding a Northwest Passage. He went on several expeditions where that was an important goal. But he and many of the men who came after him began to think of North America not just as an obstacle on the path to more profitable places, but as a place that was profitable in its own right, and a place that might be worth settling. All right, so I'm going to stop here for a sec because this answers the first question I asked you. first question I asked you was, how did Samuel de Champlain change the way Europeans thought about North America? The answer is in this thing I just read. Was he thinking of North America as a place that you should just try to get through? Or was he trying to make use of America and make use of its resources? He was changing the way people were thinking about North America. In 1608, Champlain received permission to lead an expedition of three ships and about 32 colonists from France. He sailed up the river and established a settlement, which was named Quebec City. Only nine of the original colonists, including Champlain, survived the first cold winter in Quebec City, but more settlers arrived the following June. At first, Quebec City was little more than a fort, but Champlain had a dream. He hoped that Quebec City would be the capital of a large and prosperous French colony. He spent the rest of his life working to make that dream a reality. Champlain set up a fur trading station in Quebec City. Native Americans could bring animal furs to the city, and French traders would buy the furs and ship them back to France. To make sure that the settlers at Quebec City would not be attacked by the local native people, Champlain made an agreement with some of the tribes who lived along the St. Lawrence, including the Hur Huron and the Algonquin people. He supported these tribes in a war against the Iroquois, a large group of tribes that lived to the south in what is now New York State. Champlain led expeditions against the Iroquois in 1609. He became the first European to visit the lake that is now named for him. Lake Champlain. In 1615, he became the first known European to arrive at the Great Lakes. There was more than just a military alliance between Champlain and the tribes, however. They learned things from each other as well. Even the name of the new city, Quebec, was borrowed from the Algonquin language spoken by many Native Americans throughout North America. The word Quebec comes from the Algonquin word Quebec, meaning where the river narrows. Champlain made several trips to France to recruit new settlers and secure French government support of his colony. He eventually married and brought his new wife to settle with him in Quebec City. He also brought missionaries to New France to teach the native people about Christianity. The missionaries worked with the fur traders and the settlers to extend French settlements farther inland. In the end, Champlain was successful. The colony of Quebec did not just survive, it prospered. It became the first permanent French settlement on the continent of North America. The areas that made up New France remained part of the French Empire for more than 100 years, and in time became part of a larger country now known as Canada. Over the last couple of weeks, you have learned about many European explorers and their expeditions. You have learned that they were all so intrigued by stories of wealth, spices, and gold that they decided to explore unfamiliar lands and seas. These explorers embarked on investigative travels to find answers to their questions. 
Now it's our turn to ask a question. Who was the first known European to discover America? As you've heard, Christopher Columbus is the European often credited with discovering the Americas. While searching for a route to the East Indies, he accidentally bumped into islands in the Caribbean, now known as the West Indies. However, Viking explorer Leif Erikson, another European, had also traveled to the Americas. Erikson landed in Vinland, which is in present-day Canada and is now called Newfoundland. Historians believe that the Vikings landed in North America about 500 years before Christopher Columbus and John Cabot. John Cabot landed in the same area as the Vikings. Though Newfoundland was not continuously inhabited, it, has certainly been by, it had certainly been by the time Columbus landed in the Caribbean. All of the European explorers we've learned about, Columbus, Ponce de Leon, de Soto, Coronado, Cabot, Hudson, and Champlain, landed in so many different parts of the Americas, claiming their discoveries in honor of their countries. But it's important to remember that when these explorers made landfall, they learned there were already people living in North America. Who were these people? What do you remember about the Native Americans? These people had already been in the Americas for many, many years. Though archaeologists debate exactly when and how they arrived here, most agree that they came from Asia between 15,000 and 50,000 years ago. Strong evidence suggests that they were about, there were about 20 million Native people in North America when European explorers first arrived. That means that for every one of Columbus's men who scouted out North America, there were 10,000 Native Americans already living here. The Native peoples lived according to their own customs and cultures, planted corn and squash, and built great civilizations in the Americas. Europeans exploring and later settling in the Americas brought with them their own cultures and curiosity, as well as diseases. The Europeans brought great changes to the Natives' way of life. Although we cannot know for sure who were the first people living in the Americas and when or how they arrived, what we can say for certain is that the history, culture, and legacy of both the Native Americans and the European explorers are still evident today. All right, that's it for today with our reading. Um, for your reading, well, first you're going to answer some questions about this read aloud right after this video. And after that, you are going to reread this chapter, and you're going to answer activity page 11.1. .1. And this activity page is pretty easy because it has a word bank for you. So you're going to read the information. So for example, this one says, earned the title of Royal Geographer for his accomplishments as a navigator. You're going to find the page where he, it says that he earned that title. And then you're going to tell me which character trait matches that. If he was earning a special title, does that mean that he was smart? Does that mean he was talented? Does that mean he was successful? Pick the one that you think matches the best and put it in this box. Okay? And that is it for today. So don't forget to do 11.1 .1 and to answer the questions at the end of this reading, which I will be checking for. Don't forget to click the blue submit button for every question, otherwise I can't see it. Okay? Good luck.